Welcome to Hannity. We start tonight with a Fox News alert. The left's favorite conspiracy theory is now dead. It is buried, and there was no collusion, no conspiracy, no obstruction, nothing. The witch hunt is over, and there will be no further charges, no further indictments after 675 days and nine months before that with the FBI investigation. In other words, almost three years total of an intensive, virulent investigation. Robert Mueller's report has officially been submitted to the Attorney General of the United States. President Trump, no more indictments. No collusion charges will be filed. No obstruction charges will be filed. And no conspiracy charges, nor will they be filed. Congressman Mark Meadows put it very well. The Mueller report delivery suggests that no more indictments are coming, which we now know is true, from the special counsel. And that means that we just completed two years of investigating Russia collusion without one collusion-related indictment. Not even one. Instead, after nearly two years, tens of millions of your tax dollars, the Mueller witch hunt only managed to prosecute, oh, a few people for process crimes. Let's see, Papadopoulos, his big 12 days in jail, lying to prosecutors, military hero, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn is not, has not been sentenced. He nearly went bankrupt, had to sell his home because of mounting legal bills with both McCabe and Comey, the FBI director, deputy director, admitting and bragging they set him up, something they'd never do in the Obama or Clinton administrations. And we have Roger Stone, he's going bankrupt, facing trial for allegedly lying to Congress and harassing a witness. Michael Cohn, of course, we know his case, pleading guilty to lying to Congress, other crimes related to taxicab medallions and bank application fraud and taxes. And Paul Manafort, oh, he may spend the rest of his life in prison because of taxes and, again, lying on bank loan applications. What do they all have in common? Nothing. Zero to do with Trump, the campaign, Russia, or collusion. And Mueller also indicated dozens of Russian, actually indicted in this case, Russian nationals, they're never coming here. They're never going to be extradited. Many were Russian spies or Russian bot companies. They will never, ever face trial or be extradited to the United States. Putin, the bad actor he is, Russian, the bad nation they are, they're never going to allow that to happen. None of these charges involve campaign collusion whatsoever. But we had plenty of pre-dawn uh, raids and guns drawn and doors kicked down in the middle of the night, SWAT gear, hours and hours of hardcore interrogation, screws turned, lives ruined. The money spent for what? Trump-Russia collusion was, as we always said, a hoax, a lie conceived by hate driven by fear, a 22-month witch hunt, not into a crime, but into an individual, a person. That's Donald Trump, who became president, and everyone around him. This is not how it's supposed to work in this country. This cannot happen again. This is pretty downright despicable. And when you look at our Constitution, rule of law, application, or equal application of our laws, equal justice under the law, every American tonight should be outraged, concerned about how did we get here? especially now that we have evidence of known crimes, masses abuse of power, which will be the focus of us in days and months going forward. Now, if the full weight of America's justice system can be used to persecute a sitting president of the United States when they even tried to set the election up for the person that they loved, when that person should have been indicted, that would mean nobody in America is safe. And still, as the attorney general points out, the Mueller investigation, it was not hindered in any way, not by the president, not by anybody. As if being president isn't hard enough, the president, well, he was forced to deal with this undue burden of what is a baseless, absurd investigation that all began before he became president in July of 2016. Now, this, of course, is the mainstream media spread a constant, steady stream of lies and misinformation to the entire world about America's sitting president. Small reminder. Oh, and this will get big as the days unfold. Take a look.
You told the Washington Post last week that, quote, there's a smell of treason in the air when it comes to this investigation. We are looking at the possibility that the president of the United States and those around him during an election campaign colluded with a hostile foreign power to undermine the basis of our democracy. Donald Trump now sits at the threshold of impeachment. There's outright treason. I mean, there is no question uh, that what he is doing is giving aid and comfort to the enemy. It does look like collusion. It does look like he's listening to Putin more than he is American intelligence. And frankly, I've never seen that before. Vladimir Putin and his associates, somebody has something on Donald Trump. We're hearing a new word, right? He, he said it was treason. And you wonder why I call them the hate Trump media mob. Of course, the hate Trump media mob, they were just following their orders, as they always do, from their leftist Democratic friends, taking their cue from the leaders in the Democratic Party. We have the evidence of that as well. Take a look. Do you believe that the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians in the 2016 campaign? Yes. Do you believe the president himself colluded with the Russians? Yes, he colluded. And I, I don't think that's a hard answer to the question at all. I certainly say with confidence that there is significant evidence of collusion uh, between the campaign and Russia. It's beyond the shadow of a doubt to me that if there was not collusion, there was at least the effort to collude with a foreign power. We saw cold, hard evidence of the Trump campaign, indeed the Trump family, eagerly intending to collude possibly with Russia, a hostile foreign power to influence American elections. It's becoming clear we have suffered a desecration of our democracy not seen since Watergate. They swallowed it all, hook, line, and sinker. And tonight, the only people actually shocked that the witch hunt came up empty are those on the left who again, once again, rushed to judgment, denied due process, peddling a steady stream of daily lies, propaganda, misinformation, and of course, conspiracy theories. And this includes those who hated Trump so much that they were willing to suspend any and all logic and believe in a fantasy and thereby creating false hopes for every Trump hater all across the country. There will be a reckoning. We will hold all of these people in the days, weeks, and months accountable. Now, of course, this includes known liar and leaker. Yep, Congressman. Well, we call him the cowardly Schiff. He won't come on this program. Now, he might be the most detached from reality after a nine-month investigation from the FBI, a 22-month investigation from Mueller. He had a bipartisan investigation from the Senate, another bipartisan investigation in the House. After all these investigations prior to today turned up zero evidence of collusion, nothing. Well, earlier today, Adam Schiff, he vowed to continue his own personal witch hunt into the president. Of course, why serve the American people when you can stay focused on a conspiracy theory? Take a look. What are the outstanding questions that your committee, the House Intelligence Committee, for example, will continue to investigate regardless of what uh, the Mueller report reveals? Well, you know, there are uh, any number of examples that I could give you of the information that we've obtained in our investigation, information that's become clear from the special counsel investigation, that may not be neatly summed up in a decision or disclosure that we decided to indict A but not B. If they're not answered, um, then we're going to have to answer them. We're going to have to find uh, the truth. Schiff continues to be blinded by his rage and hatred of all things Trump, lying to his constituents for political gain. Oh, and of course, he's raising money off of yours truly. Sends out fundraising letters with Sean Hannity, attack Schiff, but he's never backing down. Please donate here. Now, either way, many in the mainstream media or the media mob, as we call them, they're starting to face some reality. Their favorite conspiracy theory is officially dead. Sad day. There's no thrill up people's legs today over at some other networks. Take a look. Would it be the smoking gun? Would it give information as to criminality? Would it answer the core question of collusion to the extent that it doesn't, to the extent that there are no more indictments? I have to say, I think it's good news uh, for the White House. Well, let's Jeffrey, be specific. This is really good news yes. for a lot of people yes. around Donald Trump. Yeah, that narrative that this was all an elaborate setup, that, that, that there was an elaborate piece of the puzzle waiting for that last element, which was Americans colluding with Russians, it, it, it clearly so, is not part of the special counsel's 
move forward at this point. He's been vindicated by them, essentially. Vindic and then he's now vindicated, exactly. But if I'm at Mar-a-Lago with the president, as Pamela's been reporting, the lawyers are. Mm -hmm. um, Feeling good. That, that, that I, would be, I would be very happy. You have to say that if it turns out that there is no indictment that alleges any conspiracy between anyone in the Trump campaign and the Russians, that vindicates the president to some degree. You can see their disappointment. Oh, it's got to be killing them. I can almost taste their tears from here. Years and years of breathless hysteria, lies presented as facts and truth. What is like Maddow and all the other MSNBC conspiracy theorists? What are they going to What are they going to cover now? What is fake news CNN? Where do they find their content now? What will little Chucky Todd at night be dreaming of? Now, I'm sure, per usual, they'll just find other fake anti-Trump conspiracies to push, uh, all while never apologizing for outright lies, breathless, hysterical coverage, day after day, night after night. Now, we've been right all along. The president has been vindicated, and but so much damage has already been done. We now have our partisan two-tiered system of justice that we've been warning you about. It has now been laid bare for the country and the world to see. We have w watched constitutional rights trampled on, the Constitution shredded, the rule of law, equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws, frankly, is as of today a joke, one that will have a long-standing impact on this country and our future. And the big, big question tonight is where do we go from here? What about all the laws that we know have been broken with real evidence? Because up until now, many Democrats, all these deep state operatives that have abused power and conspired against Trump and have been involved in conspiracies, yeah, they've gotten a free pass. Mueller spent 22 months investigating President Trump over what was a fantasy based on no evidence. Meanwhile, we have for two years on this program presented real, actual Rus Russian campaign collusion in the 2016 election. The biggest abuse of power scandal in history. We have real collusion with real evidence. Hillary Clinton's dirty Russian dossier was literally put together by a foreign spy, Christopher Steele. He used real Russia lies. Yeah, from Russia. And why was that not investigated? Why are we not talking about that tonight? That dirty Clinton Russian dossier, which was never verified, and we now know unverifiable because its author, he can't stand by his own dossier, his own writings. That same dossier used to obtain a FISA warrant to spy on a Trump campaign associate. And we now know reporters were fed and spread those Russian lies, and they were spreading it to the American people before the 2016 election. That includes the Washington Post and David Korn and Michael Isikoff. We know FISA court judges that they were lied to, frauds committed before them. They were never told about the dossier's author hating Trump. They were never told about the hyperpartisan nature. Hillary Clinton paid for it. They were never told that none of this was verified or corroborated. Never told any of this. Why was Carter Page in the middle of all of this? Why were his constitutional rights allowed to be violated based on Hillary Clinton bought and paid for Russian lies? Why was the Trump campaign spied on because of Clinton bought and paid for Russian lies? Why is none of this? Why has that not been investigated? Where's the special counsel for that? And also, we now know, thanks to the Hill's John Solomon, we know a high-ranking Ukrainian official tried to help Hillary Clinton get elected interfere in our election. They did it by timing the release of embarrassing material about then-campaign chairman Paul Manafort. A Ukrainian court called it an illegal intrusion into the American election campaign. Why was that not investigated by Mueller? What about the Uranium One scandal? What about the whole issue of Vladimir Putin having thugs right here in America? that we know were involved in bribery, extortion, kickbacks, money laundering. Why did we know? Because we had an American FBI spy inside of Putin's network telling our top law enforcement Putin wanted a foothold in the uranium market in America, and he got it because people like Hillary Clinton and others signed off on that ridiculous move. We don't have enough uranium. We need to import uranium, the foundational material for nuclear weapons. 
What about the Clinton Foundation? Oh, they ended up taking about $145 million from all those executives involved in that Uranium One deal. And that was Secretary of State Hillary Clinton signing off on it. Her husband meeting with Vladimir Putin, three times his normal speaking fee in Russia. Why was that not investigated? Why were there, when you think about this, no criminal referrals for those associated with Clinton? Oh, that's right. None of that was investigated because the special counsel's investigation was a partisan witch hunt from day one. Remember, after all, Mueller hired a team filled with big-time Clinton, Obama-loving, Trump-hating Democratic donors. His top lawyer, Jeannie Ray, literally Hillary Clinton's lawyer at the Clinton Foundation. How in good conscience did she ever get hired by Mueller? Why was Mueller's pit bull, his top prosecutor, Andrew Weissman, a guy attended Hillary Clinton's election night victory party that never transpired. He was the top investigator for Mueller from the very beginning of the investigation. And don't forget Peter Strzok. He was involved from the get-go. You know, Peter Strzok had a girlfriend, Lisa Page. Strzok was the one that was calling Trump supporters smelly Walmart shoppers, saying that Hillary Clinton should win $100 million to zero. He referred to Trump as a deplorable human being, loathsome. He saw the Russia probe as an insurance policy to stop Trump in case he wins. And don't forget how they rigged. He was the one that interviewed Hillary Clinton in her investigation. And he was writing Hillary's exoneration in May of 2016 before they did the investigation in July. And he interviewed Hillary July 2nd. Comey exonerated her on July 5th. And then they started investigating Donald Trump. And what about the biggest slam dunk obstruction of justice case ever? Even Alan Dershowitz couldn't get me off. I asked him last night if I had subpoenaed 33,000 emails, I delete them, I acid wash my hard drive with bleach bit, and then I bust up my devices, my, my Blackberries, my iPhones with hammers and remove SIM cards, I think I'd be in jail for a long time. Don't forget, we had classified and top secret information on Hillary's secret server. What about Mueller's other investigators, other prosecutors? How many of them? They donated tens and tens of thousands of dollars to Democrats. Yeah, including Hillary. And Mueller hired zero, zip, registered Republicans. So we're going to find out maybe over the weekend, maybe next week, sometime soon, this Mueller report is inevitably, at least the contents of it, to the extent that we are allowed, to the extent the attorney general decides it is in his discretion and his discretion only, we're going to find out as much as we possibly can about what's in there. But know this, this is only whatever it is, it's only one side of the story. Whatever you hear is only the prosecutorial viewpoint from what is a group of hyper-partisan Trump haters, those who are always hell-bent on bludgeoning this president, no matter what. But facts matter. Truth matters. And tonight, as pointed out by Byron York, we know that Mueller did not indict Donald Trump Jr. or Jared Kushner or other people subject to the insane media hysteria speculation. Is the media ever going to apologize to them? Don't hold your breath. And we know that Mueller did not charge anyone in the Trump campaign, nobody, and will not be charging anyone further with conspiring with Russia to fix the 2016 election. We know that Robert Mueller never subpoenaed the president. We know that President Trump did not fire Mueller, we know, as many predicted he would. We know that the president did not interfere tonight with the Mueller investigation. This was an investigation into collusion. If there's no collusion, obstruction, or conspiracy that was found, nothing else matters. No matter what these people that have been selling you lies for years tell you. But we must never forget what has happened here. A partisan witch hunt that was designed to protect their favorite presidential candidate rigged that election when she should have been indicted. They didn't want Donald Trump to win. So then they lied and committed fraud before a FISA court, denying a fellow citizen their constitutional rights, spying on an opposition party candidate in an election year, having it leaked to the American people, Russian lies to influence the election. And then, of course, telling Donald Trump, James Comey did it. Well, he signs on to the FISA application in October 2016. In January 2017, he said it's unverified and salacious. That's not what he told the FISA court. They never told the FISA court that Hillary paid for it. They never told the FISA court Christopher Steele hated Trump. 
They never told the FISA court that nothing's verified here. This cannot happen if we want to remain a constitutional republic. We must bring the real perpetrators of real fraud, real conspiracy, real abuse of power and corruption to justice. Where we go from here tonight matters. All of those who abuse their powers, all of those that did everything in their power that we grant them, we give to them, to first stop Donald Trump from ever being elected, and then having an insurance policy if he was elected, thinking they knew better than you, we, the American people. They thought they knew better than all of us. They all need to be held accountable as we move forward from this day on, in the days, the weeks, the months ahead. And by the way, you and the media, I promise you, you will be eating your fake news, conspiracy theories and reports and hysteria for decades to come.